Number 13. A propeller of a World War II fighter plane is 2.3 meters in diameter. Letter A. What is its angular velocity in radians per second if it spins at 1,200 revolutions per minute? All right, so letter A is fairly straightforward. You just have to realize that the units that they gave you are already units of angular velocity. Uh, if, if, if that connection might be a little tough in the beginning, you might start to search for other formulas and try to figure out, you know, what should I do? This is just a straightforward conversion, all right? So this is 1,200 uh, revolutions. Uh, sorry, 1,200 revolutions uh, per minute, and I have to convert it into radians per second, right? So I need to get rid of the revolutions so they go on the bottom, uh, revolutions on the bottom. Then I'm thinking, do I know a relationship to radians? And I do, right? Two pi radians for every one revolution that you have to memorize. Then I have radians, so now I got to get rid of minutes, right? So they will go on the top because I have to cancel them, and then I'm thinking, well, I need seconds. So can I put them on the bottom? And I can if I know a relationship between these two, and I do, 60 seconds in a minute, right? So the minutes cancel. So left with radians per second. So not too bad, right? So it's gonna be 1200 times two pi divided by 60. And we get a value of 126 or so, right? 126, um, that'll be revolutions, no, sorry, radians per second. Okay, great. And that's the answer for letter A. Let's take a look at letter B. So now letter B is talking about, um, let's see, what is the linear speed, aka tangential velocity, of its tip at this angular velocity if the plane is stationary? Okay, so I just gave you the big hint there, right? This is really f finding V. Okay, so we need to find a, a relationship between V and angular velocity. So look on the right-hand side. Do we have one? And we do, right? This formula right over here. That tells us that the tangential velocity is equal to the radius of the uh, rotation multiplied by the angular velocity in radians per second. That was the purpose of point A, to convert it into radians per second. So now all I need to know is the radius, okay? They told us the diameter, and here I have my picture now. Here's the diameter in gold, okay? So the radius would just be half of that, right? So that should be fairly straightforward. So the tangential velocity here should be 2.30, which is the diameter, and divide that baby by two to get the radius, then multiply it by the um, angular velocity in radians per second, which was 126. And we just plug it into the calculator. So 2.3 divided by two times 126. So it comes out to be 145, right? 145. Uh, what do we got here? Meters per second. All right, so that is now the tangential velocity. Okay, let's take a look now at letter C. Oops, let's take a look at letter C. All right, so now letter C says, what is the centripetal acceleration of the propeller tip under these conditions? Calculate it in meters per second squared and G. Okay, so now I need to figure out what formulas do I know that have centripetal acceleration in them and relate them to either... Um, angular velocity or tangential velocity. And I have the equation right here, and it relates it nicely to the tangential velocity, right? So I have acceler centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. So all I need to do is now just plug this in, right? Acceler uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to 145 squared all over the radius, which we calculated was well, I'll just put in the number, right? It's 2.3 divided by two, so it should be 1.15. All right, so now when we calculate that, that will be the centripetal acceleration. So 145 squared divided by 1.15, and it comes out to be a very large number. So one point, it looks like 8.3, right? 1.83 times 10 to the fourth, times 10 to the fourth, that is now in meters per second squared. All right, and they also wanted to, for us to calculate this in terms of G. So just remember, um, simply write G will be equal to the acceleration, the absolute value, all divided, uh, divided by 9.80. So G here is equal to 1.83 times 10 to the fourth. It's already positive, so that's fine. All divided by 9.80. 
So G will be 1.83 times 10 to the fourth, and divide that by 9.8. So 1,870 Gs. And that will be the answer. All right, guys. So thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Take care.